Hello again, my dear friends. It's uh, Poet WP again, and uh, today I thought I'd share with you something I was working on last night and to finished up today. It's a uh, open letter to the media. I'm going to be sending it to all the uh, mainstream media talking heads on MSNBC and CNN. I'm also going to be sending it <clears throat> to email, both email and letter, to. Uh, all the corporate heads of the networks, all the owners. And this is what I'm going to tell them. This is what the letter's going to say. And I'm going to share it with uh, the world, of course. As a sociologist, I, uh, sounding out, uh, you know, uh, the warning flags. And, uh, you know, uh, I have a duty to warn everybody, you know, the reality of the situation. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, one of the most famous pictures in the world and my favorite picture ever taken. Uh, the 1989 Tiananmen Square event uh, where the Chinese government brutalized and killed, massacred a very large number of people protesting, fighting for democracy. Uh, of course, this is the known, guy known as Tank Man. He stood up in front of the tanks that were coming into Beijing. And uh, he wouldn't move. And then the tanks tried to go around him. And there's a famous video. You should look it up. It's awesome. Tanks tried to go around him. And uh, he moved. And he wouldn't He wouldn't let the tanks come in. He was one of the bravest men on earth. And he was a hero. No one knows who he was. No one knows if he's still alive. Finally, somebody ran out and then grabbed him and kind of drug him away. Like, dude, get out of the street. They're going to run you over if you don't move. But he would have stayed there until they ran him over, I think. Anyway, I love that picture. I look at it every day and to remind myself, you have to stand up and you have to do what's right, no matter what, just like that man did. All right, I'll get off my soapbox and get on to the more focused message here. So yeah, this is the letter. I'm probably going to title it, uh, Stop Enabling Fascism. <clears throat> I'm a sociologist with a focus on psychology. I'm writing this letter out of great concern for my country. Uh, in this email, I will highlight some changes that are essential for the press to adequately play, play its role as a check on governmental power. Everyone always talks about speaking truth to power. Well, power has always had truth on its side. How about speaking truth to justice? Or how about speaking truth to equality? Or how about truth to compassion? How about focusing more energy on taking the correct moral stand on key issues that are destroying this country's soul and causing exponentially insane levels of suffering on a mass-produced industrialized scale? At this point, the president is literally rattling off propaganda talking points from George Orwell's novel 1984. It's clear that Fox News has become a fascist state-run Trump TV uh, but the fact is, uh, MSNBC and CNN and other outlets with the corporate mainstream media are also, to a large degree, a tool of Big Brother, as it were, making them complacent in the fall of our democracy because they're not allowed to make an adequate, factual, objective-based report on important matters like the wars. This is because the corporations who make money off the war help pay the bills for corporate media. We can all clearly see that with all the commercials they air on their channels. You know, Koch Brothers and Boeing and General Electric. They, they don't, General Electric, these people don't sell things. They, they have commercials on there because they are paying off the corporations because they're the war profiteers. They're trying to, it's PR commercials is what it is. Um, as your commercials all also reflect, the corporate-owned media has he is very heavily beholden to the pharmaceutical companies. And the only interest the pharmaceutical companies have is maintaining maximum profits for their shareholders. In order for them to do that, they have, they have the greatest incentive to keep our health care system as it is. So, because the corporate-owned media is bought off is bu is bought off by big pharma you're not uh, they are not allowed to present the facts objectively based on the facts 
through common sense and deductive reasoning, everyone should be able to see the real truth about Bernie Sanders' single-payer health care proposal. However, Big Pharma discourages you from discourages them from telling the truth and this uh, telling the truth about this. And the bottom line is it would save the taxpayers billions of dollars, be more effective, and most importantly of all, the 45,000 people or so would not have to die each year due to lack of access to health care. Big Pharma also encourages you, uh, the, the media on the issues of legalization of marijuana. Also discourages, I'm sorry, Big Pharma also discourages the issues of legalization of marijuana and the use of medical marijuana by once again obfuscating the truth by largely presenting neutral reports on the matter and not objective facts. The objective facts clearly tell us that that with all the endless custom tailored strains of cannabis that that they have a custom designed strain for several hundred different symptoms and ailments and it is often and it is oftentimes more effective than the pharmaceutical drugs designed for the same symptoms medical marijuana if utilized properly by our society could very well make half of Big Pharma's pills obsolete forms of treatment. This is why the mainstream media is not allowed to tell us the truth about marijuana. <clears throat> and God knows they bombard our psyches and, and, and with their damn commercials with all those stupid drugs with a list of side effects. I, I hate having to list all those horrible side effects with every one of those commercials. It's the most annoying thing ever. Almost as annoying as the Wayfair commercial. Anyway, <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked here. Uh, <clears throat> right now, it is virtually imperative that the mainstream media take a stand on objective facts against this notion that we should go to war with Iran. Now we have the Saudis and the, Israel and the Israelis. <laughs> I almost said Israelites. But now we have the Saudis and the Israelis putting more pressure than ever on America to go to war with Iran. Just the other day, Benjamin Netanyahu was bragging at a press conference about how he made Trump withdraw from the Iran deal uh, to get one step closer to a regime change. And then some reporters made some offhand comment remark that, to the effect of, uh, through God's help, uh, Iran will disappear. It will no longer be a problem for us. And then B.B. Netanyahu said something to the effect of, oh, from your lips to God's ears. Yeah, they want to... They want to... We can't go to war with Iran. It's insane. Anyway, back on track. Uh, just the other day, Netanyahu was bragging at the press conference. Okay, then you have the CIA and the bloodthirsty military-industrial complex looking to tap into that crown jewel, that mother of all cash cows of Middle Eastern wars. Just the other day, when dumbass Pompeo was being interviewed by one of the politicians, uh, he had an exchange with him uh, in not-so-subtle vague words uh, inquiring about the CIA and like what they're doing in Iran. And, uh, yeah, for us analysts that, like, know what the hell is going on, yeah, well, that was, like, about as subtle as a turd in the punch bowl. Uh, the, uh, the CIA, the CIA has ramped up efforts to spread information to turn the Iranian people against its government to the maximum level now. That's what that exchange told me. <clears throat> so, the CIA's pressure and regime change more than ever now. And you have to contend with the fact that Trump would like to start a war to distract from all this mess he is in and to get people to rally around him. The whole goal of the wars in the Middle East is not and has never been to win and declare victory because that would necessitate an end. The goal of the wars is to keep them going on as long as they possibly can and to gain as much ground, uh, ground and natural resources as they can. Uh, they will keep these wars going for 200 years if we let them. It's a war for profit and imperial expansion, and it's evil. When the corporate media props up these wars, you are all creating extremely bad karma for yourselves. And when you see a f the final judgment, 
in the afterlife, afterlife, God will judge you very harshly. Okay, I'm going to stop here because my battery is running out, but then I'll continue this video uh, uh, later.